um, uh, <coughs> excuse me, I have a, a couple of announcements that you probably have heard before. And one is that next Sunday after our service, there will be a congregation meeting on July 9th. Please come. Also, just please check our coming events in the bulletin. And is it my responsibility to say who's coming to the birthday? Or is it yours? You can learn. Because I don't see Okay. Anything else? Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Judy. A couple things to catch up on. Um, we are the proud recipient, once again, of the Five for Five offerings from the conference from the United Church of Christ. And um, it just shows our faithfulness and uh, generosity. So I applaud everyone who's contributed. I'd like to welcome Peg's friend Maggie this morning, worshiping with us this morning. It's nice to have you. Birthdays, we have Nancy, Mary Lou, Wesley, and Dan. So let's sing. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, everybody. Happy birthday to you. And I don't know what's going on. I'm seeing flag shirts and flag dresses and flag ties and firework shirt. Is there something special going on? Fourth of July. Oh, is that what it is? Thank you, JJ. Independence. Independence. And, good news, we are the proud recipients of $120,000 worth of free Google Ads. <laughs> it took a long time and a long, arduous process to make sure that our 501c3 information got through to Google and then go through TechSoup and make sure that we had a website that was up to date and enough information on it. And then once we got that hurdle, I had to watch a video and take a test. <laughs> and uh, I must have passed it. And uh, so we put our first Google ad on Google Saturday, and it's effective today. I got an email this morning that said, congratulations, you have your first Google ad. So. Um, I'm going to make sure, Ed, that they don't charge us for it. <laughs> yes. I only spent $120 for the first month because I wanted to make sure they weren't going to charge us. <coughs> also, Wednesday night, drum roll. Our first revival contemporary Praise and prayer service. I am so excited. Those of you on Facebook have seen my post for my countdown. And um, you've seen the posters out front on the lawn. And um, we're going to have refreshments afterwards. And just doing a lot of praising God and praying and glorifying God and just spending time with God. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping some of you are excited as I am. It's not a traditional, so if you don't like contemporary, then it's not going to be your cup of tea. But it is an alternative way of worshiping, mostly geared to maybe a slightly younger generation, if I can say that. <laughs> Although I do love both. I love contemporary and traditional. I think there's a place for both. But we did one of Nick's, uh, if you recall, those of you that are here for a long time, the first year I was here, we had that... I think it was the third Sunday, there was an alternative worship service that had been in place. And so many people came to me and said, we're not coming that Sunday. So I know that it's not for everybody. So this doesn't interfere with our traditional service. We'll have our traditional service every Sunday. But if you want something alternative, if you want to not have to be afraid to raise your hand and, and praise God and dance in, in the aisles, then uh, Wednesday night's for you. Any questions about that? See me after worship. Any other joys or concerns? Okay. Let's prepare our hearts for worship.
was the perfect prelude. Thank you so much, Jane. Our hymns by request um, are printed in the bulletin, of which I do not have one. Um, so if somebody wants to tell me the first hymn, then 571. 571, 571. okay. <laughs> together the prayer of confession. Free us, O oh God, from such absorption in our own concerns that we forget your loving intention for us. We find it hard to view what is happening around us through any 
eyes but our own. We obey our passions rather than joining your intention for the good of all. It is hard for us who value our autonomy to speak of obedience, yet we are ashamed of things we have done and things we have failed to do. We want to claim your free gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. We sense that you intend for us to accept and live within that gift here and now. Help us, loving God. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. forebears and the ex exaltation of the psalmist God comes to us not only from the past but in every moment when we welcome another with even a cup of water in Christ's name we are forgiven and renewed <laughs> Therefore, do not let sin reign in your mortal bodies, 
so that you may, that you obey their desires. No longer present your members as sins as instruments of unrighteousness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life, and present present your members to God as righteous as instruments of righteousness. Our final reading comes from Matthew, chapter ten, verse, verses. Chapter 10, verses 40 to 42. Whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a prophet, a righteous per person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the word of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. This morning's message is entitled, Walking the Road of Sanctification. And I'd like to begin with our scripture from Psalm 89, because it is the perfect precursor to this coming Wednesday night revival, contemporary praise, and prayer worship service. It's about singing of God's love forever. And that's what revival is all about. Whether it is beginning one's faith journey, re-energizing one's faith journey, or going to the next level. Praising God through all our circumstances is certainly the desired road to sanctification. Doing God's will, when God's will doesn't make sense to us, is certainly traveling the desired road to sanctification. Wanting to share the love of God with the whole world is definitely living out the desired road to sanctification. Recognizing God's omniscience and omnipotence is a result of traveling the desired road to sanctification. Being in covenant with God and desiring to maintain that covenant is a fruit of the Spirit as a result of traveling on the road to sanctification. The authors of the Declaration of Independence had traveled quite a journey on the road to sanctification. They knew that there were certain ingredients that were necessary to provide for the best opportunity for the call to freedom, including religious liberty, pursuing happiness, and allowing for God's divine hand to be a part of the process. Those words probably sound very familiar to you. Just reworded a little bit differently. They appealed to the supreme judge of the world for rectitude of their intentions, meaning morally correct thinking or behavior as a result of righteousness. They relied on the support of the Declaration with a firm relationship with God and his protection of divine providence. Divine providence being the understanding that God is the creator of heaven and earth and that all that occurs in the universe takes place under divine providence, that is, under God's sovereign guidance and control. Our founding fathers understood that God governs creation as a loving father, working all things for good. They believed God to be an absolutely perfect being. First of all, all-knowing, of all truths that they are true, and of all falsehoods that they are false whether they pertain to past, present, or future. <coughs> a belief in God trusts that God's knowledge does not change. 
Nothing is learned or forgotten with him. What he knows, he knows from eternity and infallibility. Second of all, that God is all-powerful. Anything that is logically possible, he can do. And third of all, that God is perfectly good in all circumstances. He acts for the best, intending the best possible outcome. Now you may be thinking that bad things happen to good people. So how can that be? Well, that is certainly another topic, another discussion, or another sermon. But I will sum up by saying that one of God's, out of God's incredible love for us, he gives us freedoms. And not everyone chooses God's righteousness, or God's relationship, or God's love, or God's covenant. But I will say this, that our founding fathers did choose God in the fullness that God has to offer. And that is evidenced by their concern for the eventual continuation of freedom for all people. The life we live is all about struggle and triumph, sadness and joy, and trial and victory. The God we serve is the father of all fathers, today's fathers, our founding fathers, and tomorrow's fathers. One of my greatest concerns as a pastor, as I view the world around us, is that I see people with many fears. The fear of losing their job, the fear of losing their home, the fear of losing their health, even the fear of losing their mind. But in most of these cases, I see a people that no longer fear God, as the men did who wrote the Declaration of Independence. These men were strong leaders, yet they feared the Lord. Not in a scared sense of the word fear, but in a reverent sense of the word fear. They knew who they served above all else. Yes, as leaders of a great nation, they served the people, but always putting God and their faith first. When they walked forward, their steps were in harmony with God's laws on their hearts. If there's anything we need to do in this country and in this century is to be bold enough to walk forward, letting our faith in God guide us. Not our fears of the temporal world and the evils that befall us. If there's one thing we need to learn from the Holy Scriptures, it is to recognize that as children of God, we own the power to fight evil, using a name as the most powerful weapon we have. And not just any name, but the name revered by Washington, Lincoln, Henry, <coughs> Jay, and Madison, the name of Jesus. So I'd like to share some quotes from some of these God-fearing men, starting off with George Washington. Whatever may be conceded to the influence of refined education on minds of peculiar structure, reason and experience both forbid us to expect that national morality can prevail in exclusion of religious, religious principles. That is a powerful quote for today's political situation. And a second quote from General George Washington. Of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion and morality are indispensable supports. End quote. And a quote from Patrick Henry. It cannot be emphasized too strongly or too often, that this great nation was founded not by religionists, but by Christians. Not on religions, but on the gospel of Jesus Christ." End quote. And 
a quote from James Madison, the fourth president known as the father of our Constitution. We have staked the whole of all our political institutions upon the capacity of mankind for self-government, upon the capacity of each and all of us to govern ourselves, to control ourselves, to sustain ourselves according to the Ten Commandments of God." End quote. So here we have undeniable evidence of the plot of evil <coughs> against good and against God to first of all remove the Ten Commandments of God from the public square and then second of all to eradicate history or try to and historical figures thereby erasing their knowledge their wisdom, and their fortitude. Let us not erase history, but let us learn from it. Correct it where it was wrong. Embrace it where it was right. And give thanks for the lessons that we learned from it. May we live in thanksgiving for the founding fathers of these United States and for our Heavenly Father, who sent Jesus Christ into the world to show us how to overcome the powers of evil and rejoice and walk forward in faith. Amen. Our sermon hymn is Battle Hymn of the Republic, number 569.
Lord God, as we know, we're in a battle for truth and justice and freedom. The gifts that you give us, the gifts that were fought for. We are trying as a people and a nation to provide everyone with equity. But sometimes in that process, we still get it wrong. Trample upon some people's feet. So help us to hold fast to truths and love and generosity and grace. The tributes we find in your holy word. If we only would follow them, Lord, as you give us faith to do so, our world would be a much better place to live in for everyone. Thank you for every opportunity to give a cup of water to others who are thirsty. Help us to have the courage to share our faith for those who are spiritually thirsty. For that is the gift that will last for eternity. We ask you to bless this time and our time Wednesday night and very lives throughout the week, every place we go and in everything we do. Give thanks as we celebrate another year of birthdays for the flowers in celebration of Nancy's birthday from the Kohler family. Our bulletins presented by Sharon in celebration of her new great grandbaby and her wedding anniversary. We give thanks, holy God, for our live stream dedicated to the memory of Bob from Terry. We give thanks for these hymns that remind us of the importance of what we're celebrating today and Tuesday. And for the joy of Jane being able to bring those songs to life. We intercede for Pat, Rita, Mark, Anita, Andrea, Dottie, Ken, Robert, Jonathan, Jerry, and those who we now name out loud are in the silence of our hearts. Lord, we come to you in prayer, praying the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We come to God giving God our gifts. If there's anyone that would like to place your offering in the offering plate now that didn't get a chance to before worship or doesn't want to after, I know JJ is more willing than to collect them if you do not want to walk up to the offering plate this morning. So now would be the time to do so. Thank mm -hmm. you.
We bring our offering, not with the thought of reward, but because we are grateful. We give not from guilt over having so much, but because it is such a privilege and joy to share. We dedicate these gifts not to pay bills, but to enable a ministry that meets basic human needs with the good news of the gospel. May your people be empowered to give the service each moment requires, and even indeed as simple as giving a cup of cold water to quench another's thirst. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Thank you.